everybody it's Doreen and I'm back um, I had planned to be back sooner however I got really ill in December and actually it was around my vacation time and I was off from work for quite a while and I'm just getting back into things I did do a few things while I was on my break but not as much as I wanted to because I just couldn't. Um, I'm not going to go into details what was going on, but I'm almost back to 100%. I'm about 80, 85% better. I have gone back to work, and I did work on, like I said, a few projects. So before we get started with today's tutorial, which is going to be a card, and it's actually going to be a Mother's Day card for my mother. Um, I think I said last year I'm not going to be doing a lot of cards this year because I'm kind of gotten burnt out with making cards and I want to work on something else. I've gone through my craft room and I'm like I bought all this stuff I gotta start using some of it and not for just cards. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of the projects that I did work on during my break when I was feeling up to it. So I actually did some embroidery projects. So I'm gonna bring those up first. So I did these what are called mug rugs and I showed some of the mug rugs that I did in December as Christmas gifts and I belong to an embroidery club and each month we get an assignment or a project that we have to do and for January's project I'm sorry for December's project it was to make a mug rug so or it could have been January's project. I'm not I can't remember. But anyway, I, I, let me think about this. No, I'm sorry. This was actually February's project. So, the first one I did, of course, was purple and it was for me. And if you can't read that it says happiness is a cup of hot chocolate. Cuz I'm not a coffee drinker and I'm not really a tea drinker, but I love hot chocolate. Of course, you can't drink hot chocolate in the summer. Well, I guess you could. And then my other one was um, based on the embroidery club. So I've got like an embroidery machine and the hoops that you have to use to hoop your project to um, make it do your embroidery. And then thread. And then up here I just have I Love Embroidery Club. And let's see. For January's project, which is I missed Embroidery Club because of my illness, um, you were to make a bag and put a zipper in the bag. So this is what I made. And it looks like this in the inside, so there's no pockets or anything. And this is actually made out of felt. And if you are an embroidery, have an embroidery machine, this is uh, a need a good design. And I can put the link of the actual design down in the bottom of the description box in case you're interested. And then for April's project, we had to do an applique on anything you wanted using your embroidery machine. So what I did was I took this shirt that I bought at Joann's, at least I think that's where I got it, and I put these shoes on the shirt. And I actually have a pair of shoes that have these colors in it. So that's why I picked these colors because I wanted to wear this shirt with those shoes. And I'm not quite done with it because of course I want to add a little bling on there. So I'm going to put some of that on there. And then on the bottom here, I have what was called a shirt scrunchie. So that, you know, you can pull the shirt up on the side as high as you want it. So it looks like that. And I'll take that off. So basically it's this. It looks like this on the back. So, and I used scraps of fabric that I had left over from previous projects. And actually... The scraps of fabric that I used for the shoes and the scrunchie were from one of the um, bags that I made for my knitting group. And I've shown that video, or shown you what I've made previously. If you're interested in that, I can put that link down 
below in the description bar as well, or description box. So then, the other thing that I did while on break was, I finally went ahead, I started these socks that I knitted. I started them, I think it was like sometime in June of last year, or it might have been earlier than that. And I got one sock done, and then I kind of put the knitting away because I didn't feel like knitting anymore. I wanted to work on something else. That's what happens when you have a lot of projects that you work on. And I moved over to something else, and I realized I had never finished this sock. So since I was laid up and unable to go anywhere, I decided to go ahead and finish the other sock. So I did finish it. So I made those socks. Oh, and then before I forget, we also have to make a name tag for our um, embroidery club. And I try to make a different one for each new year. So I made this one for this year. So the last thing that I was working on, and then we'll get started with today's prod tutorial, is I made this bracelet and this is from a class that I took I actually was starting to feel a little better so I went and signed up for a class and then I also finished I had started this bracelet last year from a class that I took and I had only gotten about this far on it so since I was not able to go anywhere and I was laying up in bed I decided to go ahead and finish it. So that's that. So that's basically what I was doing while on my break. So let's go ahead and get started with today's tutorial. What does a card look like that we'll be making today? This is the card that we will be making. And when it opens, it opens out and spells the word mom. So I'm going to bring up the supplies so we can get started on this card. Now the card that we will be making is what is known as a tri-shutter card and this is a silhouette file and the number is 77896. The card measures three and three quarters by six. I will put the card number for the silhouette store up here probably right here in the video and I also include it in the description box so what I am using is just some recollections uh, glitter cardstock that I had or shimmer cardstock that I had now I had actually in the beginning had trouble trying to figure out how to put this together because I had never made a tri shutter card before. But I think I got it. So when you cut your card out, it will cut out like this. And then you're going to start to fold on the score marks. So your first fold will be this way. And then the next score mark, you're going to fold it down like so. And then you're going to fold this one up and then that one down. So your card will actually be like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I crease this because I actually started off with a new matte Skylar. And I didn't have, I must have used the one that Skylar sent me. So I no longer had any mats except for my Cricut mat. And I did try cutting out some of this card with my Cricut mat. And I didn't like the way... It was working with the Cricut mat. So I went and had to buy a silhouette mat. And you can't use any coupons at Michael's or Joann's for the silhouette mat. So I had to pay full price. So you know I wasn't happy about that. But the one thing that I forgot is that when you first buy the mats, they're very, very sticky. And I put my cardstock down and it definitely stuck. But then I had a hard time getting it up off the mat. But what I've done and what you can do for that is I've just taken like a paper towel and just went across it the mat like so to get some of that stickiness out so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding our pieces so you're gonna take your piece of whatever cardstock or 
paper you're going to put on top. And I am using paper from this paper stack. It's called the Garden Florals by Recollection. I usually use this for my envelopes, but I'm going to use it today for putting on here. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to use my Tombow. Grab that to put this down and hopefully it should stick okay on this paper. So we'll just get some tape on here and then you're going to place this on this side of your card. And you're going to kind of line it up and then just press it down. Oh, sorry about that. I haven't recorded a video in so while well, I forgot that I have to stay in camera view. Okay, so we'll add our next piece, which should go right here. And we'll go ahead and get some tape on here. And we'll add this one. And then we'll continue on adding our little square pieces here. So we need to have one over here. And we'll get our tape on and we'll add this one. I think I'm going to have that facing that way. And then we'll just continue on adding our pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and continue adding our pieces, which are going to go like this. And then we should have one more. Let's hope I didn't lose it. Well, I'm going to have to look for that other piece. And then I'll come back once I have all my pieces laid down. Okay, everybody, so I'm back and I've got all my pieces added on. So then the last thing we're going to add on this part of the card is we need to put the um, top layer of the word for the word mom on. So I've gone ahead and cut that out using my silhouette, and I've also gone ahead and already added. I'm using the two way zig pen to put this down. And this paper. It's actually from this paper stack. It's called Lost and Found by My Mind's Eye. And they look like this. So we're going to put that, make sure that's down. Then I'm going to add some glue on the other M. And then we'll go ahead and put this down. Then we can start working on the front portion of our card. Now I'm going to bring this up and put this down here because I don't want to get any glue on my other paper. And I'm starting off with a brand new two-way zig pen. And I want to remember to put the cap on it so it does not dry out. Because I've been known to not put my cap back on and go to use it. Oops, lost the card here. And I'd go to use it and then it would be dried out. So we'll add this one on here and press this down. So now we have the inside of our card. So now let's go ahead and work on the front portion. So once again, I am using the My Mind's Eye paper, the Lost and Found, and actually it's the reverse side of the paper that I use for the word mom. And then I've gone ahead and cut out another sheet that is going to go on top or underneath which looks like so. Now don't throw away this piece because you can use this for something else or I'm actually going to use it to put on the front of the envelope. So before we go ahead and actually we're going to put this down first and then we'll add our, our trim that I want to put down here at the bottom. 
So now what I ended up doing because this paper which came from some scrap paper that I had left over. Oh, actually, okay, this paper right here actually came from this paper studio pack called Stonewash. And I like this paper stack because it's good for making mail cards. Now, I did cut this out originally with green paper um, cardstock. And I had it on there, and I, I just didn't like it. I kind of wanted the background to be some of the background that's in this paper. So I went back, and I found this, and I like this better. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some other embellishments on top as well. So now, because this paper was white on the other side, and once you go to put this down on the front... You're only going to put it on half, your tape on half of here. This was, the white was showing on the other side. And if she wants to stand this card up, I, I guess I didn't want the white to show. So I just took what I had left over from cutting out the mom and put that on the back of there. So you don't have to do that if you want. If you're okay with whatever you're using, then you go ahead and do that. But I just didn't want it to show, so that's why I did what I did. And so then it will lay like this, and then this will lay on top. So let's go ahead and put, we're going to put this aside for right now. And we're going to go ahead and put this on here. And remember, you don't want to put the tape all the way across there. So I'm going to look for, and of course, I, oh, here it is. I was going to say I have no idea where it is, but I found it. This tape gun that Skylar gave me, the thing about this tape gun is that it's not supposed to run over any spaces where there is no paper. So we're going to try this and see if it really works. So I'm just going to run down here and get my tape on. like it might be working so thank you again for this tape gun Skylar she always finds the perfect things for me for crafting and I know she's missed me not being on, on YouTube and doing any videos but she's been very supportive while I was out ill so and I really appreciate that and I did miss you guys, so I'm glad to be back. So now I'm going to just go ahead and add this along here. And then what I'm going to do is I want to do this, go ahead and do this ahead of time. I want to go ahead and just put the trim that I'm going to be adding on the bottom along here. Let's get this on now. If I can get this tape off. And this is just some trim that I actually found and actually that doesn't come off so we're going to have to glue that um, I found at one of my local fabric stores that unfortunately is going out of business I don't know if any of you have a Hancock Fabrics but they are closing all 255 of their stores so that's a real bummer because I really liked going there to get trim. And I want to get this on here without burning my fingers. So we're going to run it and hopefully the glue hadn't dried before I got it on there. And it looks like it did. So we'll just run it along here again. Naturally, we gotta make sure we got it lined up evenly. And then, because I'm gonna add this flower here, 
along here, I decided I needed to cut another piece. So I'm going to get that on there, and we're going to skip using the tweezers so we can get this on here quickly. And lay that down. Okay, so now we're ready to add this part to this portion of the card. So, like I said, we're just going to put tape on this side. So, I think what I want to do is open this up, and then I'm just going to get my tape along here. And we're going to stop right at where the score mark is, because you don't want to go any further. And then we'll add this part like so. So when your card sits closed, it's closed like that. And I probably should have come over a little further. And then when it's open, it opens like so. So I'm going to go ahead and finish doing my embellishment and make my envelope and I'll come back with the finished card and the envelope. Okay everybody so I'm back with the finished card so this is what I've done for the front of the card I've got my bling up here that spells out the word mom and this was actually just one um, sheet with the word mom on it I picked it up somewhere I think at a scrapbooking hall or something and then I've gone ahead and taken the recollections flowers and added those onto the front of the card. Now I did take and spray them with some of my um, homemade glimmer mist that I've made. And if you want to know how to make your own um, glimmer mist, Scrap the World Tamika has a great video showing you how to do this. I will put the link to the video down in the description box so that if you want to make your own you can go ahead and do that. I kind of like doing this better because I've spent, if you've been watching my videos since the beginning, my first video was on a haul for Glimmer Mist that I bought. And I followed what someone else said to do to keep them from sticking, which was to put a BB inside the Glimmer Mist. And I did that, and it changed the colors of all of my Glimmer Mist. I ended up having to throw just about all of them out because the colors were nothing like what they originally were when I bought them so don't do that um, I just was very upset that I you know had to throw all that glimmer mist out because the colors were terrible 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 colors once I added the BB in there so you can make your own or you can go out and buy some if you want. I found that the ones that I buy they clog up too much so I don't buy them anymore I just make my own and then I added the trim that you saw previously on the front here and this flower actually right here was already with the shimmer on it and that was in the dollar bin at Michaels. I haven't seen those in quite a while at any of my Michaels and I think they're not a, if they do have them they won't be a dollar anymore I think the dollar bin has turned into a dollar fifty bin or a two dollar bin and then for my envelope I took some of the same recollections paper that I used for the inside of our card and I made my envelope and then as I said I took the piece that cut out for the negative space for the front of the card and I added that on the envelope and then I stamped out the word Wonderful Mother and this is a stamp set that's by Stampin' Up! called Well Scripted and I use my Stampin' Up! Pink Passion. So that's it everybody. This is my first tutorial for the year. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye!